I'm here with us now, Republican Governor of Wisconsin, Governor Scott Walker. He's out now with the new book, Unintimidated, A Governor's Story and a Nation's Challenge. Um, book looks great. I'm, I'm a little nervous. You just told me I was in it. I hope you're nice. I, I was very nice. <laughs> You were very great. It actually, oh, it's a very revealing part. I it, talk about a, an infamous uh, phone call. The crank, crank call, The crank yeah. call from uh, David Koch that was oh. one of my most embarrassing moments. Uh, it was actually oh. a good learning moment because yeah. I, afterwards I came clean and said, yeah, it was me. I was an idiot. Learning I moment. Stupid. Trust literally no one well, in the world of politics. And not only that, don't let it go to your head. Yeah. I mean, I was kind of, after that, had kind of been kind of full of myself, I think. I talked about that in the book, and, and it reminded me, it's, you know, in fact, I read a devotional later that day that was very telling. It said, the power of humility, the burden of pride. Uh, and I said, I hear you, God. Wow. Well, well, let's go there, actually, because we talk about you uh, when we go. We're on Joe's book tour, and we talk about different, you know, people who are in the public eye who could be potential 2016 contenders or whatever else. And we talk about how, you know, you had your moment in the sun early on as governor, and you were so quick to talk about the mistakes you made and how you've evolved along the way and how you felt even I asked you if you had regrets expected to hear someone say well I don't because I won or whatever and you said oh I should have listened more yeah um, wh why aren't like you I said it you were the first one to ask me I remember Joe actually jumped in and he said that's a, that's a setup Scott you don't need to answer me because question I said no actually that's a great question I was so eager to fix things that I didn't spend the time talking about it listening to people and explaining what the challenges were I said one of the reasons why I wrote this book, people are going to be disappointed if they're looking for a biography. You don't learn how I became a Eagle Scout or what I did in sports in, in school or anything like that. I really tell the story about what and how, but more importantly, why we did what we did in Wisconsin, which I think a lot of people will be surprised to learn about. Okay, Mike Barnacle. Uh, you know, you say that's why I wrote this book. Yeah. Did, did you write this book? Because I Mark Thiessen wrote it with me. I, I put it right, his name right on the cover. How did you do it? Mark's well, because uh, he, he no, how, the mechanics. Yeah, every Sunday night we would get together on Skype of all things, talk about the wonder of technology. From about 6 to 9.30, uh, Mark and I would Skype back and forth for about six or seven months, and I'd tell the story that allowed him to help me put it together, and I could go back to being a governor throughout the week. Very good. And, and, and being a governor, Mika brought up, you know, the initial phases of your governorship and the mistakes that, you know, you've, you've copped to in this book. Apparently, I haven't read the book yet. But do you worry going forward, if you have ambitions, other than being governor of Wisconsin, of being branded as a union busting, you know, nickel and diming guy who tried to take rights from union employees that have already been brokered. No, I mean, in the end, what we did is not unlike what the president oversees at the federal level. One of the things I point out in this book is that federal employees, by and large, don't have collective bargaining. In fact, federal employees actually pay a higher percentage of their premiums for health care than what we even asked for today. Um, so when the president went after me early on in our fight, I said, well, apparently he isn't paying attention to what happens to federal employees because uh, what they have is actually more generous uh, or more rigorous, I should say, than the, than the generous situation we had in the state of Wisconsin even after our reform. But, yeah, for us, uh, I think a lot of people around the country may think that. What they'll learn as well in this book is all the other reforms we did, how we've improved the economy, how we've cut taxes a billion and a half dollars, how we, in fact, this year will be our third year in a row that property taxes have actually gone down uh, on a typical home uh, in our state. I think they'll learn about education reform and entitlement reform. Probably one of the biggest things we've done is entitlement reform, transitioning people from government dependence to true independence. Uh, but for now, you're right, a lot of people still think about the unions. There's a whole lot more to us in Wisconsin. Steve? So let's turn, if we could, to the Affordable Care Act. You've yeah. been an outspoken critic. You've, uh, you've not set up an exchange in your state. You've not expanded Medicaid in your state under Obamacare. The Republicans are, are correct in a lot of their criticisms, but I have not yet heard a really specific alternative for how they're going to deal with 50 million uninsured people, how they're going to create more transparency and better options for individuals. Mm -hmm. All you hear is a lot, frankly, of generalities. Do you have some specifics for us today on what a better sure. plan would be? Well, I think there's some options. Obviously, I'm, I'm not in the federal government, so I don't know. No, but you might be. But, 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 but I have looked at others out there. You look at the Heritage Foundation, you look at the American Enterprise Institute. Both of those, I think, are two pretty good hybrids. AI this last week just had a good op-ed in the, in the Wall Street Journal about that, where it's really about taking the tax incentives that right now are really more focused on, on uh, employer-based plans and offering that same incentive for everybody out there, whether it's a health savings account, whether it's an individually purchased plan, or one that's one through your employer making that incentive and then correcting some of the challenges that are legitimate about guaranteed issue, about uh, uh, pre-existing conditions, about overstate line plans. All those sorts of things can be resolved without mandating an exchange either at the state or at the federal level. Sam Stein. 
Yeah, Governor, I, I, I remember after the 2012 election, you came out pretty forcefully and, and said the Republican Party re needed to recognize certain realities. You talked about how gay marriage is a dead issue to young conservatives, and you endorsed something like a pathway to citizenship for people who were here illegally or undocumented people. Um, do you feel like the Republican Party has taken the necessary steps since the 2012 election to modernize itself? And how would you advise, if not, how would you advise the uh, Republican Party in Congress to take those steps? Well, sure. W one correction, though, on, on uh, immigration, I talked about fixing the legal immigration system, not uh, not going beyond that. But, but, but that aside, I think the larger issue you see with governors. There are 30 states in America that have Republican governors. I talk about that at length in the book. And for us, most of us are probably more conservative across the board than Mitt Romney was our nominee the last go around. The difference is we focus on economic and fiscal issues and that yeah. really makes the difference. Okay, so you did an interview recently and described what the candidate uh, for 2016 should be. I don't know, yeah. Barnacle, if you saw it, but it sort of seemed like you were talking I mean, it just seems like you were talking about Scott Walker. I, don't I, I, I said, current or former governor? I'm not a former governor. Yeah, but it's and you saw the clip about Paul out there. I said, Paul's one of those rare examples yeah, of the kind of courage and leadership. Yeah, it like you're talking about Scott Walker. Well, it, uh, John actually asked me in that question what my ideal candidate would be. It would not be that, that somebody else couldn't do it. But I think governors are the ones who get things done. Not just Republican governors. I think historically, before Barack Obama, the last time we'd elected a, a member of Congress was 1960. That was my point, is that by and large, Americans want to see people with chief executive experience out there. Okay, while your chief of staff glares at me, would you be the ideal candidate? Well, I think any of the 30 Republican governors would be the ideal candidate. <laughs> Come on, Barnacle, try a different way. <laughs> well, I'd love to be president, I'll say, right here, right live, of the Harley-Davidson Motor Company, but that's a whole different matter out there. As, as Made governor, in Wisconsin. chief executive of your state, someone, in, you know, entrusted with administering to your state the best that you can possibly do, why would you not accept the Medicare money the, yeah. the, from, from the federal Medicaid government. Good question. Lunch. Why would you not take that to help, to help insure people who are currently uninsured? Well, in our case, we actually have, you look, the Kaiser Family Foundation, the Washington Post had an interesting editorial the other day about the coverage gap. We were the only one of all the states that didn't take Medicaid that does ha has no coverage gap, according to the Kaiser Family Foundation. Every state is different. In our case, we did something different than the states that didn't take or did take. We were able to take and put everybody living in poverty for the first time in our state is covered. Everybody living above poverty goes into the free market, and we don't expose the taxpayers. For anyone who says, why would you not take it, my answer is simple. I don't want to expose the taxpayers in my state to the burden that's going to come due when the federal government reneges on the promise. And anybody who thinks that's not going to happen said this is the same federal government who couldn't put a basic you, website You up. really think that the federal government would not actually send you the check they're promising they don't now. to send you? I had to put $664 million. It's a true fact. $664 million more in this year's budget, almost 40% of that is because money the federal government has pulled back on from previous promises made to the states. It's already happening. It's happening not just in Wisconsin, but across America. They're pulling back already. They're going to pull back anymore. Anybody who thinks the federal government well, has 16, they're, they're, almost 17. They're pulling back in part because your colleagues of your party on Capitol Hill are forcing things like sequester, which leaves them with less money. But these things are related to the Affordable Care Act, not to the sequester. All right. These are things that happened long before all that. Okay, the book is unintimidated, and as you can see, although your staff's kind of intimidating. Look right there. <laughs> scared. A governor's story in a nation's You're taking pictures for tweets. I know. They're great. <laughs> Governor Scott Walker, thank you so much. Very nice to see you. <laughs>